Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Let's give the Lord a hand clap and a praise today because he is worthy on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Amen. If you have an unspoken request here tonight by the uplifting of your hand, the Lord sees every need. Let's go ahead and let's bow our hands. I'm sorry, our heads rather. Let's lift our hands and let's pray. Let's pray today. Jesus, in your mighty name, God, I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Lord, we want to glorify you, God. Lord, we want to give you our highest praise today, Lord Jesus. I pray for every prayer request here in the house today, God. Every unspoken request, Lord. I pray that we feel your presence in here today, Lord Jesus. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Feel free to come up and let's worship the Lord here today, tonight, and... Um, in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead. Give me joy down deep in my 
one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, praise team. Thank you so much for that beautiful worship here tonight. Amen. I do have a couple of announcements here for us. You may be seated just for a moment. We want to remember Pastor, uh, Sister Tiffany. They are down in Florida. They're spending time with Bishop, which is great. And family is so important. Amen. So we just want to remember them in prayer, safe travels, uh, and that they have a great time and, and really just get some rest. Amen. Amen. Um, also, I wanted to mention this today. Move the Missions announced the, the amount that they were able to gather today, and it is an all time record and it is amazing praise the lord i have the dollar amount i want to give it to you eight million seven hundred thirty seven thousand two hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty nine cents hallelujah that is an all time when the world says that the economy is is failing and all of these things the lord just continues to to get the increase and that word will be preached across the world amen Amen. Uh, for the youth, please remember back to the battlefield is the 29th and the 30th. This is going to be an awesome time. We're very excited for that. Uh, really close. I think it's about 45 minutes away. It's in Talmadge, um, which is neat. So we are planning on going Friday evening, and we are not going to be spending the night. There's not going to be a hotel or anything like that, uh, just for cost sake. And then we're going to come back, and then we're going to go back for the morning service. Amen. So we'll meet here and drive down. All right. And then Harvest Party, uh, October 8th, 10 a.m. service only. Uh, the Harvest Party is going to be at 3 p.m. We do need more trunks for this. I know we've had a lot of people stepping up and volunteering, which is amazing. So thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> donating food and just what a great time and what a great opportunity to outreach. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then lastly, please remember November, November Fall Fire. Please, please, yes, be in prayer and fasting for that. We are very excited. We are always so blessed by that. And uh, we want to do our best to spread the word, to bring family members and friends and individuals uh, who have not seen our church before. Amen? Amen? Awesome. Amen. If you'll stand with me, let's prepare our tithes, our offerings here tonight, church. Let's ask for the Lord's blessing. Jesus, in your mighty name, God, I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to be in here today, Lord Jesus. I pray that you open up the windows of heaven. I pray that you bless this offering here tonight, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, God, and we want to glorify your name. And I pray for our message here tonight. And everybody say, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's lift our hands up. Let's, let's clap for the Lord one more time as we give. Amen. Amen. After you've given, uh, you can be seated in then youth, and uh, we're going to have classes tonight, so we will be in class, and I'll meet you right back there, okay? Amen. Amen. At this time, Brother Jim, if you wouldn't mind making your way forward. We love Brother Jim and Sister Dawn, right? Amen. Amen. If we could welcome him to the platform, he's going to be teaching to us tonight, preaching to us tonight, and we are so honored to have him. Amen. God bless, you. God bless you. God bless you. 
What a privilege it is tonight to be in God's house, God's presence. And uh, one thing about God, he doesn't have to get old in your life. And I say that because I've had people say to me, well, I'm living for God, but I'm just bored. You know, I've never served God in a time of feeling bored. It's always been a good thing, a wonderful thing to go into God's presence and in his house. The Holy Ghost does not have to become stale in your life. You can become stale, but I'm thankful today for that fact that it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Why don't you turn around somebody and smile at them tonight and say, God loves you, and I do too. Tell them, God loves you, and I do too. Praise God. My wife asked me tonight if I was going to be long-winded. And I told her, when I get long-winded, I said, just reach your hand up and just run it through your hair. So if anybody feels like she needs prompting, just go up and say, you can do that anytime. <laughs> Praise God. Amen, amen. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I believe the Lord has something that he'd like to talk to all of our hearts about this evening. So if you'll help me preach tonight, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. If you don't say hallelujah, I'm going to preach longer and longer, okay? Amen. I want you to turn over with me this evening to the book of 1 Corinthians to the 15th chapter. I'm going to read a verse of Scripture, a few verses of Scripture that I know you're familiar with, but I hope that it will be that, that I can bring something to you tonight that may or would encourage you in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12. And the scripture simply says this this evening. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen then, is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man is his own in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. I want to step back and I want you to read verse 19 with me if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable 
And I want to talk to you tonight on the subject, living with expectation. Living with expectation. God bless you. Would you just lift your hand and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we appreciate the hope that we have in you, oh God. We ask you to minister to every heart, every soul through your word tonight. We pray, God, that we can have open ears and open hearts to the word of the Lord today, that you can direct our paths, that you can speak to us in a way that will cause us to consider our relationship and the future that we have in God. And we just ask all this for your glory, and we pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you as you're being seated. Talking to you on the subject tonight, living with expectations. My granddaughter, this Sunday, will turn 16. I was 16 yesterday. I said I was 16 yesterday. Anybody in here that's lived any time at all knows exactly what I'm saying. Life is so quickly passing every one of us by. I remember as a young person actually praying and saying, God, don't come. I want to be able to get married. I want to have children. I want a home. I want to experience the things of life. I want to enjoy those things that are in my future. And, you know, I was terrified, literally, that God would come. But he hasn't come, and I've been a very blessed individual. In fact, I was speaking to my, with my brother-in-law here a while back, and he said, Do you know what, Jim? He said, I appreciate how we grew up, where we grew up, on a farm in Missouri. And we weren't town kids, and uh, we did so many things. And it was such a, a great thing to be able to grow up the way we did. And I said, Mitch, you're totally right. I said, I wouldn't take nothing for my early years. I remember a lady in my church one day, uh, her son was complaining to her, and, and he brought me in on the conversation, and he said, but again, tell her, I'm 12 years old. I'm old enough to mow the grass. And I thought, I can't argue with that. When I was six and seven years old, I was on a tractor out in the middle of the field plowing fields, and she won't let him at 12 years old mow the grass. Hey, you know, let the kid grow up. Let him experience life. Let him know some things in his youth. That it's, it's all right for him to do something and to learn some things and, and to be involved in those things that will help him as he gets older. Maybe that's the type of background you had, but it wasn't the rearing up that I received. You know, we were told to get in there and get with it. Get our hands dirty. Get after it. You know, uh, we weren't allowed to be lazy, and uh, we didn't play video games. They didn't exist. <laughs> Praise God. But hard work did, and we're allowed to enjoy that. But as I have become older, and I want you to stop for just a minute tonight. And I want you to think about your life. What is your life made up of? What are your values? What matters and what doesn't matter? What's important to you? And most of all, I want you to think about your end. Because the fact of it is tonight, no one lives forever. It's appointed and a man wants to die. As sure as there was a birth date, and my granddaughter's hitting that age of 16. I can remember just yesterday when she was born. But life is moving so swiftly, and things are changing all around us. 
But I, I want you to understand, everybody here has an eternity. Everybody here has a future one way or another. Amen. You can choose to live for God or you can choose to live in sin. Not even God himself will choose for you. But he leaves that decision to you. Will you be saved? Will you be the individual that determines your end and begin to, to, to think about, uh, can I live my life with an expectation? I believe Jesus is coming. I believe he's going to appear just like his word says he's going to appear. It doesn't matter if I'm in the grave or whether I'm alive and, and doing the things that I do every day. But I want you to know this one thing today. I believe life is something that's eternal. Oh, I know the natural life. There's a, there's a, uh, an existence that we all have and we all get excited about. I, I remember the first house we bought. Man, we gave a whopping $14,500 for it. Can you believe that? I remember when our car payment was $68. Our house payment was $138.50 insurance and taxes included. Man, can you imagine facing that kind of indebtedness? But things move on. Things change. But I'm so thankful the Word of God doesn't change today. I'm so glad that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm glad that I can stand in God's presence this morning and I can live my life with an expectation. I don't care what happens in this world. I don't care what, uh, what goes on in the economy. I, I don't care what uh, uh, happens uh, in the realms of, uh, of the unknown today. But there's one thing I want to tell you, I want to live my life understanding that life is more than a dead end street, but God has given us a hope. God has given us an opportunity to experience the great things that he has prepared for them that would love him. I don't just have hope in this life, but I have life in a future tense. I have life even in the place wherein that there is an existence, my friend, that is there prepared for me if I will prepare myself for God, for what God has prepared. It's a situation that we just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Back a few months ago, I sat and talked with a friend. And as I was talking to him, this man has been through a tragic couple of years, just into his 60s, but he was involved in an accident, motorcycle accident with an 18-wheeler. You don't have an accident with an 18-wheeler on a motorcycle and come out of it in good shape. But as he talked to me, and he said, but again, I almost died several times, but he said, you know, God brought me through it. Back a couple of months ago, I, I sat with him, and we were talking again. He said, but again, he said, I, I want to tell you something. He said, my, my settlement has finally come through. I'm going to receive a large settlement out of this accident. And I said to him, I said, man, I am so glad for you. I know that you have had a terrible last couple of years, and I know all the suffering, all the pain, and the heartache that you've been through. And I said, I'm so happy for you that you are getting the settlement. And so it's went on, and uh, I knew that there were things happening in his life, and I had talked to him, and I received a phone call the other day. And as I received that phone call, the individual said to me, Brother Gideon, have you talked to so-and-so? And I said, no. He said, well, he's in the hospital. And he said, he had a spell. And he said, they took him to the hospital, and they did 
test all on him. And he said he has a massive brain tumor. It cannot be operated on. He said it's cancerous. And they are telling him that there's nothing they can do for him. So I called him, and he answered me in the room. And I said, Brother, I'm hearing some things, and I just want to talk to you about them. And I'm your friend, and I'm here for you, and I, I want to do what I can do. And he said, I appreciate you calling, Brother Gideon. And he said, I, I, uh, it's, it's true what they're saying. Tonight, he's in the hospital. He's got some tumors in his lungs, and they have interfered with his breathing. And it's to the point, he doesn't know how many days he has left. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if that was the end of the story, it would be a tragic, tragic thing. But you know what? If you're living in Christ, I said if you're living in Christ, this world is not your only hope. If in this life only I had hope. But friend, I've got something today that's not just about this world, but it's about Jesus Christ. It's about what he has prepared for them that love him tonight. It's about my everyday walk. It's about my relationship with God. It's not about what I own and what I have in my possession. You can have cars and you can have houses and you can have money and you can have all the things that are valued in this life. But if you don't have God, amen, you really don't have anything because all those things can be taken away in a moment's breath. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you that as a child of God, I walk into his house. I'm not living, amen, in the dread and the fear of death tonight, but I'm living with an expectation. There's a life, amen, that God has prepared for me and that I can enjoy, that I can be a part of. There's an eternal existence for every one of us. There's something more than dollar bills in this life. There's something more than a few good times that you might have. And there's nothing wrong with having a good time. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad when I walk into God's house that there's a joy unspeakable, a full of glory, a situation that makes me shout inside. Oh, can you praise him that you have a life with expectation today? Can you praise him because it's more than just gloom and doom? Several years ago, I got sick and tired of listening to the news. I'll tell you what. If you listen to the news all the time, you ain't got much to get excited about. Woo, somebody shout hallelujah. But if I listen to this, there's a hope. I said, there's a hope. There's something real. There's something wonderful today. There's something that will cause amen, that beauty of God to become so real inside of me. No, hallelujah. It's not all about this world. Amen. If global warming's what you're worried about, well, I'm going to tell you what, you ought to be worried about something more than global warming. Because one of these days, God's going to destroy this whole world with a fiery, and their situation that's going to dissolve it. I, uh, I think about the simple fact that... Things, amen. When the power goes out, you got problems. God is doing things. 
with each and every one of us. You know, over in the book of Job, 7th chapter, 6th verse, he says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. How many sometimes think life is simply flying? Yesterday it was January, and here we are moving into the middle of September. Unbelievable. I said it's unbelievable. I, uh, I think about the scripture in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter, 26th verse. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What's your soul worth tonight? I pastored in a city, Monette, Missouri, and uh, had a lady ask me one night after service, Wednesday night service, she said, Brother Gideon, can I talk to you for a few minutes after church? I said, sure. And we went in the office and she it had a good service that night. And she looked at me and she said, I just wanted to step in and tell you I won't be back to church anymore. So I said, really? You know what was crazy? At this time I was teaching her husband a home Bible study. And I said, what are you going to do about your husband's Bible study? And she said, well, I'll talk to him about it. He can figure out what he wants to do. But she said, I won't be back. And I said, well, why would you not be back? You hear some crazy things when you pastor. And she said, do you know Sister So-and-So that goes to another church? I said, yeah, I know her. She's a pastor's wife. She says, well, at the job today, me and her got into an argument. And I said, you got into an argument with sister so-and-so? And she said, yeah. And she said, I'm just quitting church because I got in an argument with that lady. And I said, you know, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't even go to the same church but you got in an argument with her and now you want to quit church. She said, yeah. I said, can I ask you a question? She said, sure. I said, are you going to quit your job? And if I'm lying, I'm dying. These are the words she said to me. No, I need my job. I need my job, but I don't need my salvation. I'm going to tell you something. Get in the church. Stay in the church. I don't care what hell throws at you. Live for God. Serve the Lord with all your heart. Come on. Be genuine for God. Love him with every part of your being today. Don't let anything cause you to even think about quitting God tonight. But live. I said live with there a realization that God is preparing some things for you as long as you stay faithful, as long as you stay in the church as long as you as long as you love him don't let anything come between you and your God live with an expectation live understanding but whatever this world throws at you it's not worth throwing in the towel over I don't care who makes you mad. I don't care who says something about you. I don't care who looks at you the wrong way. 
Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a praise the Lord? Can you clap your hands under the Lord? Can you understand that you can stand right here? People have all kinds of dreams and expectations in their younger years. But I'm going to tell you something. The older you get, the more you realize how frail and fragile this thing called life is. talk to people. I've counseled with them in their discouragements and in their battles, in their problems. And I tell you today, I've seen people with so much potential turn around and because of something so simple and so stupid, and I'll say it again, so stupid, lose their salvation. They walk away from God. And you know what? The devil just loves to see people walk away from God. And you know what he does? He has a heyday with them. Because once he gets you walking away, friend, he'll take you to a place that you don't want to go. I said he'll take you to a place you don't want to go. I get to reading in the scripture. And book of Revelations, God's not trying to use scare tactics on you. He's just trying to give you the truth. He's trying to make you to understand how wonderful it is to be a child of God that has hope in the midst of so much discouragement and hopelessness. I, uh, I look around and I see people that used to live for God, that used to serve him with gladness, I used to be such a worshiper, such a prayer warrior, such an encouragement to people all around them. But you know what? They let the oil leak out of their vessel. And pretty soon, they're just a hint of what they used to be. I get to looking at some things. And I get excited about my future. Praise God. Anybody excited about going to heaven? Come on, I said, are you excited about going to heaven? I once was lost in sin, but you know what? My God picked me up out of the miry clay. My God turned me around and set me on a beautiful course, and I'm here to stay. I said, I'm here to stay in my relationship with God. I don't want to get further from God, but I want to go deeper in God. I want to hear Him. I want Him to talk to my soul, to my spirit. I want Him to break up the fallow ground of my soul right now. I want to weep before Him. I want to cry amen, before Him. I want to be broken again and again and again because every time he breaks me amen, I feel the strength of his presence. I feel amen, the fire of the Holy Ghost renewed in my spirit. Come on. Amen. Don't give up on God. Don't there throw in the towel but live for God with everything that you can possibly give to him. My goodness. I love that old song. Enjoy in Jesus. Hallelujah. What a choir in Yosho, Missouri. Anybody know the song? Man, I guess I'm preaching to us older folks tonight. What a good choir. And because I was taller, I got to stand right in the middle up against the baptistry. So I had people all around me. And we had this girl from Louisiana. 
And she was right smack dab in front of me. And she had those long, spiked high heels on. You know. And we were singing that song, Enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Enjoying Jesus. And man, we were getting with it. And all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Ghost fell. And people were shouting all over the place. And all of a sudden, the whole choir was shouting. And this little gal from Louisiana was right in front of me, and she had those spiked heels, and I was backed right up against the baptistry. And man, I mean, she was going to town, amen, on my toes, and she was giving it all she had. And I had to shout too. I wasn't in the spirit, amen. I promise you, I was holy in the flesh. But you know, there's just something about enjoying Jesus that gets you excited, that gets you on your feet that causes you amen to rejoice in your God in the salvation of your God come on church we need to enjoy him we need to understand that living for God is not a dead end street but oh it's exciting to live for God if you put your whole heart in it don't let depression don't let what somebody says to you take away this experience that God has given you Come on, enjoy God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come on, let's act like we're saved. Woo! I said, let's act like we're saved. Let's act like being apostolic. It's not even having a gun pointed at my head. Oh, God is good. I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I'm not just living for this life. And you know what? If you are, you're going to get robbed. Because the devil is a thief and a liar. And he'll take everything that God has given you away from you. And you will be crying, not because of brokenness, but because of having so much and thinking that you had so little and you gave it up so willingly. I'm glad one day that the Holy Ghost fell on me. And he convicted me in such a way that I went home on a Sunday afternoon and I had a house cleaning. I went through my house. I got rid of my liquor. I got rid of my drugs. I got rid of everything that I knew it was not good for me if I was going to live for God. I got rid of my pornography. Say amen. I got rid of things that were weights. I just repented that morning, got the Holy Ghost, but I got a dose of it to change me. Can you lift your hands right now? Would you be thankful that one day God changed you? That one guy, God broke you. That one day God caused you to want to be a real Christian and you wanted to serve him. Amen. And you recognize, hallelujah, amen. There are some things that I can expect from God if I live for him. Amen. I said, there's some things that I can expect. I can live with an expectation. I can know, amen, that God is there for me and that he's prepared these things that I should be a part of them. Future tense. 
when I gave up sin, I got God. And I got the things that God had for me. I've heard it said that martyrs have been threatened with death. And they responded with, don't threaten me with God. Don't threaten me with the things of God. Friend, you can take my life, but you can't take my salvation. It's still amazing grace. Come on, I said it's still amazing grace. When I look back and see where Jesus brought me from, it's a mighty, mighty long way. Can anybody look back tonight and can you see where God brought you from? I'm not looking to go back, but I am looking to go ahead. Amen. I want to walk with him. I want to serve him with gladness today. I want to be a part of those things. I'm going to be honest with you tonight. God's been very good to me in the last couple of years. And I, uh, I went here back a couple months ago and I bought a very nice F-250 diesel truck. Leather, lariat. And I crawled up inside of that thing. And I feel the niceness of it. And I sit there and sit behind that steering wheel. It's got heated seats, but it's also got air conditioned seats. Man, isn't that a luxury? Cool your backside off while you're going down the road. And I bought a 36-foot Crusader, fifth wheel, three glide-outs on it. And I can go up there and sit down in that leather recliner and just take my ease in it. Took it down to North Carolina and set it up on one of the lots I own. And I put it there. I'm not bragging tonight. I'm just telling you God's been good to me. I said, God's been good to me. I look back to the days. If it wasn't for playing poker, we'd have starved. But I believe in back then playing cards, God was good to me. But he brought me out of that mess. I said he brought me out of that mess. He brought me in to the church. He gave me a family. He gave me a pastor. He gave me a group of people that I could come into his house. The reason I said those things is, you know what? One of these days, I'm going to see the Grand Canyon. This is last year for Don teaching school. Praise God. Ain't nothing wrong with retiring. Hey, man, I want to go see the painted desert. Hallelujah. I want to take her to Mount Rushmore. Come on, everybody. I want to see the Redwood Forest. Amen. Hey, I want to take her to the gold mines in South Dakota. Hallelujah. As long as you don't come out with any of it. And then make sure you don't do that. Let me just ask you something. Anybody here got one of those things called a bucket list? Anybody got a bucket list? Wave your hand if you got one. Praise God. 
man, you just reach in the bucket and say, I've been wanting to do this my whole life. And whew, now I can do it. I ran into an elderly gentleman in North Carolina in the grocery store one day. And so we were just talking. I was quite a bit younger then. And he said, uh, he was an older gentleman, probably in his mid-80s. And he said to me, he said, you got anything you want to do in life? And I said, yeah. He said, any place you want to go? And I said, yeah. And he said, I want to give you a piece of advice, Sonny. And I said, okay, I'm all ears. He said, do it now. Yeah. Don't wait till you get old like me. Because one of these days you're going to get old like me and you won't be able to do what you want to do. I said, thank you. But I've always remembered that little session with that man. You know what? If you want to go to heaven, do it now. Don't. Amen. Look around and say, I think I'll wait. Don't wait. Go ahead and get it right now. Give it your all. Serve him. I said, serve him. Serve him tonight. Enjoy God. In the days that God has given you. I'm telling you. God is encouraging us tonight. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Folks, I'm living not with just a little bit of desire to see the God, things that God has prepared for me because I literally believe they're out of your mind, out of your imagination. They're beyond your thinking. I can only imagine. Come on. I can let my imagination go. But if you live with expectation, there's going to be a place that this church is going to stand before the throne of God, and there's going to be such a joy and such an excitement. You may have to turn your back on a few things in this world. But living for God is worth it. I said living for God is worth it. I said living for God is worth it. Go ahead and live for God and live with an expectation that what God has prepared for those that love him is going to be unimaginable. Go ahead and read the 19th chapter. of the book of Revelations. You know, Jesus asked a question of Peter. We're getting ready to close. If you'd stand. He said to him, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? talking about a bunch of fish. There's things that you're being offered every day and it's so easy to fall in love with the things of this whole world and use your love, lose your love for God. But I don't want to lose my love for God. I want it to get stronger and stronger. Anybody here want to love him more than you've ever loved him? Anybody here want to walk closer to him than you've ever and walk closer? <laughs> the early church cried with a loud voice and said, 
Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Persecution. They were battling with all types of things. But they've thought about things that some men of God have said to me. I think about some of the old songs that I've heard in my days of living for God. And you know what? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Can you lift your hands this evening and can you rejoice in the fact that you have treasures like this world cannot begin to offer to you? If you live with an expectancy, if you live in such a way, you're not having to live for God. As a friend of mine used to say, I get to live for God. I said, I get to live for God. I said, I get to live for God. God is prepared for some me, for evangel something, if I will but prepare myself. I said, if I will prepare myself, if I will recognize that, amen, this world is not my home. We should not be afraid to have faith in the things that God has prepared for us. We should not be afraid to reach out in expectancy for what God has prepared for them that love him. You know, I preached funerals in my life, but I think the hardest funeral that I've ever preached is for a backslider. To know that that person used to live for God, they used to serve the Lord, they used to be a one God, Jesus name, Holy Ghost, apostolic, tongue-talking child of God, but today they're lost. Let me tell you something. I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer because when you die in this world, you don't take one thing with you. But my friend, when you die in Christ, you have a whole bunch of things awaiting you in your service and in your relationship with God. I, uh, I love that old song that says, I love him too much to fail him now. I'm not here preaching fail him on failing him. I'm telling you, live for him. I said, I'm telling you, live for him. I'm telling you, serve him with every part of your being. I'm telling you, amen, to live with an expectation because the little this whole world can give you is nothing compared to what God has for them that love him today. Let's lift our hands. Let's worship his name. Let's give him praise from the depth of our soul and realize, amen, that God is so good to us. Come on, let's love him. Let's be a child of God that's determined tonight, amen, to be that person that God is going to bless you. God's going to keep you. God's going to encourage you. God's going to be there for you. He's not turning his back on anybody, but my friend, he'll walk beside you. He'll carry you through the darkest hours, amen, of your life. Come on, let's serve the Lord tonight. Let's be a church that comes in and realizes our hope is not in this world, but it's in Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior. Oh, let's just praise him one more time as we get ready to close and service and leave and pass this house with my prayer. Don't leave your relationship with God behind. Amen, amen, amen. Let's pray. God, we're thankful for the hope that we have. 
We're thankful for your love. We're thankful for the presence of God that's with us, that encourages every step of the way today. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us such a mighty, mighty long ways. Let us each one understand and comprehend today that what is awaiting us, amen, is such a beautiful experience that we cannot begin to even begin to comprehend it. We ask you right now, Lord, talk to our hearts. Make us to understand that living for God is the best life that we're ever going to live. Lord, we just thank you. Amen for bringing us to this point. But God, we're also thanking you for taking us every step of the way home tonight. We appreciate it, and we lift our voice in one final praise to you, and we thank you as you lead this house with us and keep us, God, in our goings today. We pray and ask it all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ today. Clap your hands one more time to the Lord and be dismissed in the the name of Jesus. Smile at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I'm in the church. God bless you. Amen. See you Sunday.